We're on now, okay. Good to be here tonight. We're just a couple of minutes late. That's uh, that's normal for us, so it's good to be here. We're praising the Lord for another opportunity to come. A lot's happened since we was on, on this uh, camera last in the last time, so uh, I want you to be much in prayer because a lot of things happen to sickness. And, uh, my neighbor lost his son-in-law today, and uh, uh, so we want you to pray for them. Pray the Lord to touch and help them. And uh, Rosie's sick, and uh, uh, so uh, I asked Wayne, did Rosie have one of them signs in her kitchen that says the cook is sick, sick of cooking? He said she didn't think she had one of them, but uh, uh, might, she might be putting up a sign sick, sick of riding with Wayne, you know. <laughs> but I don't think she's got one of them. But uh, now my, Tiffany might be a different case, might, 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 be, might have one of them. Right, there you go. All right, but uh, do pray the Lord of touch. Pray for Joe, and uh, he had a good day, I think, yesterday. Uh, pray for him, and keep praying. That, uh, I felt like he, he ate real good last night, so he, if he can start eating, get some strength. Um, Judy and uh, James, James is uh, this is making him quite sick. This medicine, uh, Roger uh, took another treatment. I hadn't, hadn't heard today how that's done. That was yesterday. So we'll be much in prayer about that. Be much in prayer for uh, uh, Linda's brother Frank. Needs our prayers tonight. Um, all of our family, our children, our grandchildren, godchildren, step-grandchildren. We try to call it off like this every day. Daughter-in-law, next daughter-in-law. We just want the whole bunch to be prayed for. And uh, Sue is doing better. Had a, I put it on there, she's having stents, but it was pacemaker all the time. But uh, it, 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 prayer was what was needed. Uh, so that's what, what she got. And so uh, keep praying for this. And um, tell me, the, you told me his name, Don. Don. And uh, we got him on the prayer list that had to leave work there. Thought he was having a heart attack, but he was allergic to his medicine. And uh, or had a reaction to the medicine, and so let's be much in prayer for him. He praying the Lord to touch. Uh, was it Brian, the, the young man that had bunches of strokes that Eric put on? Wasn't it Brian? Uh, so let's keep praying for them. He had a, a bunch of strokes, I think, uh, the day before yesterday. So uh, be much in prayer for them and that family. Um, and then there's a, a, a lady. I can't remember her name, y'all Y'all probably do. Uh, she had surgery, and uh, they couldn't sew her back up. Oh, that's uh, Amber. Amber. Amber Lindsay. Amber yeah. Lindsay. That, you remember Josh. Yeah. That's his sister. All right. Uh, and it was heart heart surgery? Yeah, it was heart surgery. They said the next so many hours uh, is going to be a critical one. Okay. 12. 12 hours. The next 12 hours is critical, but they, they didn't sew her up, but she's in ICU. And so let's remember that in prayer. Who was the one right before her? Did I already mention Wayne? Uh, there's just so many, I can't remember all the names, but uh, God knows them all, so let's pray for them tonight. Uh, Mary Davis put on here that her meds are making her sick, and she said thank you for her prayer. So let's so keep, 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 keep praying, praying for Mary. They put off Johnny's surgery uh, because his doctor got sick, his heart uh, surgery. Uh, for a day or two, so let's keep praying. Everything stays well, and, and the doctor gets better where he can uh, get this surgery. So let's be much in prayer about that. Um, anyone else that I miss? Uh, my Aunt Eileen had asked for prayer for her hand. Um, I, I, I need prayer. My family needs prayer. My, me and Joanne and all our children and family. How about y'all? Y'all need prayer? Well, just remember Shane. Shane, amen. And, um, he's go I can't remember the day he's going back. You'll have to keep me fresh for that. It's Tuesday, the Tuesday. 5th, November the 5th. All right. So let's pray about this. All right, anything else that I'm missing? I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, too, so. Man, right, let's pray. I'm about that until you leave, that's right. Oh, until you, till after that's over? Can't eat till like, after 12 o'clock? Till 6 hours. Oh, six hours before. I have to get up early in the morning. 
Well, well, you can get up and eat. At, you can get up and eat by, at eight o'clock or so, and quit laying in the bed and still have plenty of time between that. That's rough on the fat. Oh, rough on the fat. Like before you get more. Oh man. Hey <laughs> man, I, I'll tell you what. Now you, I, now you know why I'm, I said that about Rosie's sign. <laughs> oh, all right. Yes, uh, April is. April, uh, April, it's named April because she was born on April. Her and Jace was born on the same day at the same hospital. And I, we didn't know they was having a baby, and they didn't know we was having a baby. Uh, so uh, uh, her and Jace got the same birthday. And uh, all of this happened within 15 minutes or so uh, from the time that uh, she had went, she had talked to him to this happened. So uh, let's be much in prayer and pray the Lord to touch and help her. I was glad that, uh, I was glad that uh, Jennifer was there with us today so where I could hop through the woods and Larry's house had just not well through the woods, probably about as far from the pulpit to the front door. Uh, but there's a lot of saw bars in there between here and there. But, uh, and glad to be over there with her and with him uh, for uh, just a few minutes there before they took him out. So, uh, all right, let's be much in prayer and pray now. Pray for our country. Pray for this election. Uh, I've, been doing, I've been doing my own style of praying. You can do your style of praying. But I'm praying, I'm praying for a change. Ain't, ain't that something? Uh, uh, that bunch that's in there was, would condemn me for praying for a change, but that's, that's all that Obama and them run on. Change, change, change. Amen. But you know what? They done so much changing, I ain't hardly got any in my pocket now. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you something. I went to, the, went to the store the other day, and she told me it was so much in 59 cents. I said, I think I've got that 59 cents. I said, I've got one of them. And she said, oh, no, I've got it. She said, I've got a bunch in my back pocket. And, said, and I, I thought, well, my goodness, go to the store to buy groceries, and somebody else is paying for them. So uh, but that was a blessing. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Good to have you all with us tonight. Let's pray together that God would touch and help. Father, we thank you that you gave us another day. And Lord, we thank you for your blessings. And Lord, we're not looking for the big things. We're looking at all the little things, God, that you have blessed us with today. And Father, the things that you have given us strength to do. And uh, God, in uh, places you've allowed us to be. And Father, we thank you for being able to pray with people. And God, that you've opened doors up that we could pray and minister, God, in the ways that you have. And Father, we're praying for comfort for this family. God, for April and all the family over this loss. Others, God, that's lost their loved ones. Lord, as we looked at the, uh, God at the obituaries today, and God, we've seen these that we know. And God, these that we've uh, been around so much in our life, but yet... Uh, they've come on home to be with you now, Jesus. And I pray, God, that you comfort those families, God, and help them. Father, we pray for our loved ones that are lost, God. They're running out of time. They just can't see that. But, oh, Lord, would you open their eyes that they might realize that time is not on their side in this life. But, God, their time is on our side when we have everlasting life. And, God, we ask you now to minister. Give us good report from the test and these that's going to the doctor's. And God, all of these that are taking treatments, we bring them to you. Touch our nation, touch Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. I know you probably mentioned him, I, and I dismissed it, but remember Harvey. Harvey uh, and, and Carolyn, I didn't I didn't get to mention them. But do pray for Harvey, Clark, and Carolyn. They, they do need our prayers tonight. They surely do. All right? Well, this is a good blessing today. We went down stores, seeing folks come to church. Got some hot dogs cooked. I seen him come to eat hot dogs with us tomorrow. There's a woman brought a six dollar can of lard up there. If y'all want it, they gave it to us and didn't get the charge for it. Well, that's mighty nice. That's mighty nice. Yeah. Well, we all been blessed at the grocery store. Yeah. Amen. They were talking to, at the, the store there the, today, I believe it was, and uh, uh, I got to see some uh, folks that used to come to church here. I, I got to see two different families. And uh, I told Joanna, I said, if I could just win a few more places, I'd got to see a whole bunch of people that I know. And they were talking about Walmart. I said, yeah, they, they say that's a saving place, but they ain't never proved that to me, you know. 
But I know I'm in the saving place here tonight, don't y'all? Amen. Amen. I, I tell, they tell you, 394. Amen. 394. I thank you, Clap. We just have to see you. This world is not my home. I'm only passing by. The treasures in my home are all up in the sky. My friends and loved ones won. The cross is Till I home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I am no friend like you. If heaven were not my home, dear Lord, what would I do? The angel beckoned me from a heaven to the door. I can't feel I home in this world anymore. In that eternal land, there is no night there. Saints there be to shout, and Jesus' name declare. The Savior I will pray, through all my sorrows more. Can't go back home in this world anymore. and everything the world's got to offer and uh, doing it without uh, any grievance at all in their heart. Uh, you know, I, I know when I stand before the Lord, I'm going to have to have a whole lot to answer for. It. But I'm going to do my best to make it the least amount I can. What about y'all? Amen. 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 So if I have to separate myself from the world to be able to have more with God, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to just stay away from it. What about 401? 401. I would try the same key. First, second, and uh, the last verse. Be all right, be all right. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home for no strong battle ride. Oh, they tell me of a Oh, I hear 
Great thou art. He wants to sing how great thou art. I think he'd rather sing little as much if God is in it. <laughs> right? All right. Nobody? What well, happened? We was kidding. You sing? The kids are singing. Come on, happy. You gonna sing? Well, come on. It's all right. We're waiting on you. She ain't coming. Oh, I bet he wanted her to sing tenor and him just stay down there in the low bass. All right. Nobody? Uh, at least it's about time you found you one. I've been, I've been hearing you on, uh, singing on, on the camera, coming in there singing. You, you sang just almost every song that everybody sang. So you cannot say that you don't know one because you know them all. She, she's got some in her body. She, she yeah, does good. Yeah, she does a good job. I, 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 I hear her singing on the, on the camera. I, yeah, I hear you singing on the camera. It sounds good. Yeah. It sounds good. Yeah. So you be, you be thinking about one, all right? Now, I'll get work one up. All right, Wayne, you kicking it off? Lord, Lord, give me an hour and a half to pick on him tonight, and mm -hmm. I got to quit. I church is over, but he's on overtime tonight. So, uh, all right, if you don't mind, do you? If I was going to kick anybody, I, I'd want to kick Lord because I wouldn't have to kick high. Amen. Amen. Uh, you get warm. Swing low. Swing low. I like you, sir. That's how it's going to Okay, hold it, hold it. Is that Chris? Kick it off, Toby. Anybody got a fancy gun?
Good to be here tonight, isn't it? Good to be here. Uh, well, 
like to send it out to everybody. We'll send it out to that's not able to be here with us on Wednesday nights. We love all y'all, Doris, Shalene, and the rest of the people that might be watching. Uh, Miss Lisa Martinez, we send it out to y'all if y'all are watching. And uh, let's try this in about B flat. Sonia uh, and Joe, this is one of Sonia's songs that she likes. So. Time is winding down. Just look around us. Evil's breaking loose on every side. The devil knows his time's almost over.
quick, right? We'll be gone just that quick. And I, I thank the Lord for that. Uh, <laughs> those are real old songs now that uh, Mildred used to sing. And uh, I thank the Lord for it. I might just try a brand new song on y'all. For me, probably ain't a brand new song for y'all. Y'all probably heard it. If you have, don't, don't worry about it the way I do it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so that we always change our things to help us, I reckon. Kia C may be guided. Where he said to run for dry earthy land. He said to grind and beat off the day. He sent the bird to sing in the tree.
strengthen me with power according to your mind for dear us and patience as I travel through this night I keep praying well I've seen so unfair I keep praying I know we answer prayer I keep praying when the world around me falls I keep praying for you good to be here this evening, as I've already said. Thank for every chance that I get to stand and uh, uh, <laughs> preach the word of the Lord. Uh, we're going to be starting off in Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. <clears throat> My fingers were dyslexic. It went to 41. All right, there we go. Before we read, y'all know that I like to go to the Lord in prayer and pray with whatever the Lord's got for us and every one of us that we get. So let's pray. Lord, we come before you as humble as we know how. So thank you, Lord, for this house. God, 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 Lord, the devil's trying to do what he can to try to discourage and knock down, but you're great as he is. Lord, we just ask that you touch the house. Lord, that you administer to each and every one gathered here, those that are watching via Facebook and that are watching on YouTube later. God, that the message will go out that will draw us all closer to you. Lord, because you know what it's all about. Lord, this life has so many things in it. But the most we important your Lord of all is you. God, we just ask that we might not be lost. I pray that you not in the dark school. They might get saved. Anybody back to sleep. Searching for answers, they'll find them in you. May we all find what we need in you this evening. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Job chapter 14. Y'all got your Bibles? Amen. 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 Y'all may see it if you want to there. You know, uh, as you begin to uh, think about what Job was saying, y'all know what was going on in his life. Man, he was persecuted there. He, he was suffering because the devil came against him. The devil, the devil hated Job. Anybody know why the devil hated Job? Because he didn't want what the devil was offering, and he wanted to build a hedge of protection around nobody could touch him. Because Job was faithful to God, and God was uh, uh, jo uh, God was faithful to Job, right? And here he was uh, in the midst of all of this. Job, uh, Job had lived a life of peace. God had blessed him most of the days of his life, and and filled with so much things. And all of a sudden, this trouble came in Job's life, and it wasn't just a little trouble. Mind you, I'm not trying to belittle the things that happen to Job. I don't want those things to start happening to me in my life by any means. But I'm saying here this trouble came in his life. And how often when troubles can get so heavy, we forget the blessings that God had bestowed into us. You know, uh, uh, 
Well, when you when you look at when Jesus was tempted forty days by the devil, uh, in Luke four uh, one through two and three, it says that the devil tempted him forty days. He was led of the spirit to be tempted of the devil forty days. And then after he had been tempted for 40 days and he hadn't ate nothing for 40 days, he hungered and then there the devil comes. He says, I've got him now. He's got a weak spot. He's hungry. I can come against him. I can try to make him bow down to me. And sure enough, he tried to get him to. If you remember the conversation that they had, he came forth trying to make him turn the, the, the stone and the bread. Y'all remember? But he wouldn't do it. He tried to get him to bow down before him and he'd give him all the kingdoms of the world. And he wouldn't do it. Right? Y'all remember? Everything that the devil brought against him, Jesus had a scripture verse to bring against him. Then of course, when you're in your weakness, the devil's going to bring the scripture right back and use a verse against you, right? He's going to try to, to get you down through the word. He's going to try to get some way to attack you to make you get weak, to make you doubt. The devil studies us, and, and, and as Christians, y'all got to understand that his desire in our life is to destroy us. Amen. Amen. That's right. Each and every person, and he comes against each and every one of us in a different way. The same things that gets on my nerves may not get on your nerves. Right? right. Some things that want to make me slap somebody may not, it may not bother you at all. You may be able to just go on with your day about it. And you say, well, I just can't see why well, that person got so upset about that. You don't know what led them to that point. Right? Yeah. You see somebody out there beating the devil out of the gas pump because it's not giving them the receipt. Before you judge them, see, you might think about what led them to that point into that day. Right? I wasn't beating the crap out of a, out of a gas pump. I'm just saying. <laughs> I was a gas pump. No, I was <laughs> Too often we're so quick to judge. And we get hung up in our own selves. But I'm not talking about that this evening. That's a whole different message of, of where I was getting at. But I want you to think about something. How many of y'all know the old saying? No good deed goes unpunished. Right? You see, the, the, look at, uh, look at uh, Peter. In per, 1 Peter 5 and 8. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So as a roaring lion, he says, did you notice that he said your adversary? If the devil is your adversary, that means he is your what? Enemy. He's your enemy. He, he's going to come against you. He's going to seek that which will hurt you, that which will get you down. He wants to ruin you. You know, uh, as you think about it, like I said, let's look back at the beginning of Job. Job was living that peaceful life. He was living a good life. He was very wealthy. He had many servants. Had many. Uh, 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 he had many sons. Uh, so he had sons and daughters. He had uh, many cattle and, and, and all the blessings that, that they could have considered at that time. He was considered one of the wealthiest men in that area at the time. And he had done everything that he knew to do. Right? You know, uh, uh, when you think about it, and you read in Job chapter 1, what do you find out when, when the devil talks to the Lord? The Lord says, the Lord did not ask him who he was from. He'd been going to a folk throughout the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And in Peter, you know, he runs around wanting to know who he can devour, so he's wanting to destroy, cause this may cause harm. We got that already established, right? Well, when the Lord knew what was on his heart, what was on the devil's heart, he said, do you consider my servant Job? The devil wanted to be able to touch him. He wanted to be able to make him suffer because he knew if he could that he would curse God. That was the devil's whole goal in this. He wanted to hurt Job so that Job's actions would hurt God. He wanted to use Job to shove it in God's face. Say, so see, he ain't perfect. He'll do it too. That's basically what he's wanting to do. First thing he let him do, he let him take his, take his possessions and he took his children and all the things, his servants, all these things happened in day one. Then Job didn't curse God. Right? 
Then the devil come again, and the Lord said the same thing to him. If you consider my servant Job, then Job said, flesh to flesh, you let me touch his body some enough. You let me touch his body, and he'll curse you to your face. So he let him touch his body. Let bulls come up on him. He sat there and scratched and sat cough and well, with an old potsherd that said. And uh, he sat there uh, and uh, just suffered and scratched. And his wife came out and said, Why don't you just curse God and die? The words of the devil come out of his wife's mouth. She didn't know that's what it was going to take to end the, the thing. The devil was speaking through her, trying to get him to just get up, give up, trying to get him to just be discouraged, trying to get him to just be put out. Said, so just end it. You ever, you know, has the devil ever worked that way with you in your mind and in your heart? Somebody else say something. Well, why don't you just do this and just get it over with? Right. The devil uses those tactics often. You know, Good doing good things. I, I, you know, I, I got to thinking about, about what it is. You see, the devil just can't stand it when we are rejoicing in the blessings of God. Y'all understand that? He couldn't stand that God was blessing Job and that God was proud of Job because the devil had entered in the heart of man. And he had done all he could do to, to cause a distance, a gap between God and the heart of man through the sin in the garden and ever since then, Right? So he couldn't stand that there was somebody close to God. And you know, doing good things, as, as you look at it in our life, as being a Christian, doing good things isn't always easy. You know what? Uh, no good deed goes unpunished, is what we as we're looking at this. In a way, that's true. You say, oh, no, no, don't say that. That's negative. But sometimes you've got to embrace the negative. I want you to think about something. Sometimes that's true because the devil pays attention to when you're doing something good. And he's going to do all he can to break your stride and knock your feet out from under you. It's what he wants to do. So in a way of speaking, you could say that. It ain't God punishing you for doing good, but the devil hates it Amen. when you do good. He may not look at you all day. Until you do something good. And then you get his attention. Oh no we didn't. He didn't just help that lady. Right? He'll do it. Think about it. He knows when you're doing good. And when you're having some spiritual joy. He don't care if you're having some lustful joy. He don't care if you're living it up with the guys. He don't care if you're out doing something that's keeping your mind off the Father. He don't care about that. It's when you're having some spiritual joy it gets him on his edge of his seat. Uh-uh. We ain't going to let that happen. He wants us to be afraid to do good. And he wants us to make stupid decisions when he does bad things to keep us continued down the path of not doing good. Because of our fear. The devil wants to be feared. You know, the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord. The Lord wants to be respected and feared. The devil just wants to be feared. He wants you to cower under him. And he'll do what it takes to make it happen. He doesn't care about respect. You know, the devil don't care one bit if you respect him. Look at the people that's following him. You can tell they got no self-respect or they're acting like their father. Amen. 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 Right? Right? They're acting like the Father. As Christians, you might as well be prepared for it. Okay? Don't let it catch you off your feet when trouble comes. We all have things that happen. This week's been a booker to me. I mean, Kenneth's talk, it's been a booker to him. It just seems like every day something just irritating and frustrating is going on. And like I said, when I go, some people, it'd be like, I don't know why you get upset at this. At least you're breathing or doing this. Well, I know that. I'm thankful that I've got breath. I'm thankful that other things are there. But you ain't there in the heat of the moment when everything just comes crashing down. And who are you to judge? Because the same things probably happen to you. I'm going to use Kenneth as an example. I don't think he'll mind. Maybe he won't. You know, we had a good time Thursday at the rest home. A good time. God blessed. And we. The, the, you can ask Wayne and Kenneth even more. We just had a good time. Wake up Friday morning, feeling good. Lord still blessing, feeling how you did. 
It didn't take long for the devil to try to knock the feet out from under it, did it? Literally speaking. He got up in the ceiling, 18 foot up, or roughly is how high it was, running a light. Next thing he knows, he's hanging by the rafters. If he had failed the 18 foot, he might not be here today. He called and done it, come to the people's ceiling. That's how quick the devil said, yeah, I'll knock that smirk. You say, well, just ask the attack. Don't you think that the devil won't make something like that happen? Your car will break down. Your best friend will say something to you that hurts your feelings. Right? Your cow will get out and pasture and get run over. Somebody's car will get damaged. You see all these bad things that are going on. You say, that ain't the devil doing things. I'm telling you, the devil's got more handiwork in what goes on around us than what you give him credit for. Because he is out there every day to try to get us discouraged and try to get us to pull away from God. He'll get you thinking, well, I don't want to have that good of a service then. If that's going to be what comes out of it next time, I ain't saying you're saying that. I'm saying that's how it works in people's minds and in their hearts. Well, if serving God is going to get me in this, what's the point in it? Shut up. Don't give the devil that kind of hold in your mind and in your heart. What you ought to do is serve God more. We'll get on that in a minute. Amen. You see, Galatians 6 and 9 said, Let us not be weary in well-doing. And he said, For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And in 2 Thessalonians 3.13, he said, uh, But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Why do you think he would have to say that? Why do you think he'd have to say that? Because the, son, the devil's going to try to wear you out in the way of doing it. He's going to discourage you in the, way of, uh, in the way of doing it. Everything he can do to knock you down, he's going to do it. Man. And you have to remember to not get discouraged. To not let it knock you down. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how is that possible that you're not going to get weary in the way of doing it? Oh, you're looking for the answer because nobody said. I'll tell you what it takes. It takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of praying. It takes a lot of studying. And even with that, it's still hard. It's still hard. You see, we have to be wise to what tricks the devil is using against us. Do y'all know that? If he knows something works, he's going to use it over and over and over again. If he knows that he can get you discouraged and he knows that he can get you proud and he knows he can get you so angry, he's going to do it over and over again. You might wake up in the morning in a good mood the first time that's okay, Lord. You're with me. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it could have went this way. Second thing the devil shows. Thank you, Lord, that it didn't go that way. You're a little tired. But third time it comes around. <sighs> Lord, thank you. Then by the fifth time the devil comes knocking, you're ready to throw something. And you forget to thank the Lord that it, couldn't, that it didn't go worse. Right? Oh, come on. Be honest. It ain't just me that gets that way. Huh? Amen. You know, if, if, the, if the devil knows there's something uh, that will make you not go to church, do you know that he'll do it? That's right. It's like Daddy has said, you know, an old car used to start skipping before it quits. So if there's something that he can put in your life, whether it be events, activities, whatever, that will take you away, he'll keep doing it. You know, it wasn't that bad that I missed church that Sunday morning to go fishing. I think I'll go next Sunday, too. It ain't that bad. I can pick it up on Facebook and watch it while I'm there. It's not the same. Right? Man, I really wanted to go to that ball baseball game or that football game. Man, that was fun. I think I'll go next weekend, too. Then big next weekend. It's very soon you'll buy a whole season pass to where you're going every weekend. And you'll fly and spend money to go see whatever, wherever we're playing. And then there's God's house forsaken. Just like 
the devil planned. Right. He fell victim to his trap. Right? right? Think about it. If he can make you lose fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ, he'll do it. All he has to do is that whisper that little bit in your ear. Make you think somebody is talking about you. Make you think that somebody hates you. Or maybe somebody just by something said something and you thought they were talking about you, but you didn't know. But they're coming out mad now. Been there? Hey, I've been the subject where the people really was talking about me. How about you? Amen. How to get to the point that I just don't care? Right? I don't care if you like me. If I invite somebody to church and they come and you don't like them, you just keep your mouth shut and let them come to church. Maybe they can get the Lord. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. You say, well, what if this is? I don't care. Well, they used to be a drunk and they used to be dead. What were you? But the devil will let you automatically start judging people uh, uh, where they got tattoos on them. What's that got to do with their soul? Amen. Come on. Amen. Right? It don't matter where they've been. If God has drawn them, there's a need. Right? I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. The only difference between a lot of people and, and us, people that's been in prison and people that's been uh, uh, that's been hooked on stuff is with well, the prison part. A lot of us didn't get caught in what we was doing, and the hooked on stuff. But some of you have been, and God has set you free. Right. And then others didn't. You just gotta thank God that they didn't get the hook deep enough in. That's right. Right. Amen. But it's no reason for you to say that you're better because the same, if you go through the same situation, those but that gets back to where I stopped. And I'm already preaching that message this evening. There you go about judging people. If, if you look at where they come from, if you knew really their story, what got there, maybe you wouldn't so be so quick to judge. Maybe you'd be a little bit more compassionate and tell them that Jesus loves them. Amen. And that there's a better way that they don't have to be in the shape that they're in. Right? Think about it. If he can cause family problems, he will. Whether it be between a husband and a wife. You know, some of the worst arguments they used to say uh, is on the way to church on, uh, or on the way from church or right before church service is about to happen, whether it be on the phone or whatever. That if God's involved, the biggest argument's going to happen or the biggest distress is going to happen around that time. Why? Because the devil hates church and he hates you for going. Because you're coming supposedly to be lifting up the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Worshiping, praising, getting your heart ready to do battle for the rest of the week. You know, church on Wednesday night, it used to be called prayer meeting. Because people would unite to pray together. They need the prayer to be able to make it through the rest of the week. What all the wrong face because the devil was come against us. Amen. 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 The devil knows that if he can quake you a little, He's accomplished a lot. And he'll try bigger and bigger things. Different things. Try to make you doubt. So often in the barrage of his attacks he, uh, that he throws at us, we get caught up in the commotion of the explosions and more the, of the hate and the sin that's around us that we get to be like Job and we think all days are bad. And like I said, I'm not belittling what Job went through or how he was suffering. But in the midst of extreme persecution and, and from the devil and extreme heartache from the devil, you get to the point, even though you know God's there, you get lonely. You feel lonely. You feel powerless. You just feel like you're being consumed in a hole. And in the midst of that consumption, we forget that we've got an option. You know, in the midst of us trying to do good from the week and getting aggravated that it don't turn out, you know, like I said, uh, you, the, I, the devil's going to try to make you regret trying to help anybody. He's going to. In the midst of doing all that and it not working out, we forget that we don't have to be victims to his uh, rage of hate. We've got an offense back. One of the greatest things to do to 
bait the, the slap the devil in the face. How many of y'all would really like to slap the devil in the face? I mean, if you could, you knew you'd do so good. You'd really like to, wouldn't you? I told him that one or two times. I was so mad at him, and I was praying to God, and I got mad at what the devil was trying to do. I said, Satan, if you just show yourself, I'd jack your jaw. But then I know it myself, I can't do, I ain't got no power over him. Right. It's the devil that uh, is stronger than me in that case when I get in myself. But when I let my father step up, when I let God step up and I say, devil, you know, I'm in Jesus' hands. Come on. You know, come fight my father. Let's see what happens. You remember the first thing that the kids want to do if you called your daddy in school if he's getting a You called your daddy. You called your daddy. I told one one time, I don't remember if I told dad this or not, but I was in, I was in high school. And uh, there was three uh, kids that was trying to pick on whoever they could. And there were some kids in our construction class that they had picked on. And I'd said something to them, and then they started trying to run their mouth on me. And I'd been picked up two before once, and I was going to, I was going to do whatever I could with it to, to hurt them. And I told Daddy about what uh, about me getting mad. He said, you're making too good of grades to get a fight and get kicked out. He said, you... Uh, if they do it again, you call me. I said, I ain't going to call you. He said, you're going to call me or I'm going to whoop you. <laughs> so I called him. And, uh, his, and the, the construction teacher, because he, he was clueless to what was going on. Uh, I, I asked to go use the phone in the, in the cafeteria. So I walked down there and called Daddy. And Daddy came up there and Jamie did it that day. And they wouldn't let him walk through the school down there to where I was at. They made us walk on the outside of the school. And as we was leaving, one of them poked her head out of the ag class because classes was changing. When he saw us walking, he went back in. Getting to a, song, to a long story about what we're saying. The next day, they said, you called your daddy. I said, yeah, calling daddy saved your life. And he looked at me and said, why? I said, because I done decided I didn't care. I was going to beat your brains out. I said, I was so tired of what you were saying and what you was trying to do to the three of you. I said, I done decided what I was going to do to you. And figured out how I was going to do it too. I said, I've got plenty of tools here in the construction class. I said, I could have got it done. And they looked at me. I never had no more problem out of them after that. You know, when you, uh, but with God, you've got to go to your father when you face the devil. You can't take the things into your own hands. You just can't do it. But we forget that we have that offense. One of the greatest things we can do is turn around and when the devil's raging at us because we did something good, do something else that's good. Mm -hmm. Do something else that's good. The devil may get mad more uh, and he's going to attack more. The more he attacks, just do good. You know, I heard a story about this uh, this really wealthy man. He was a Christian. And they, they came up asking for uh, a hand uh, for the, the the preacher, the pastor of a church that, that didn't have any money in this family, that they were they, they was a very poor parish, and they 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 were about on the verge of starving. And he went in there and he gave them a hand, and he said, "Hold on a minute." He walked back in, he got him another hand out of his salt. This is back in the days when they had it, you know, salt in their salt houses. And he said, they, the, the guy there heard him muttering something. He said, hur, hur, hur. "And he's." He went out there and gave a third one. And he said, man, why, I appreciate you being so generous. He said, uh, he said, what, what, what's going on? Uh, and he said, what are you, I said, I heard you muttering and she's going out. He said, that was tell, trying to tell me not to do it. And he said, every time you told me to do it, he said, and then at last, uh, he said, I told him, if you don't shut up, I'll give him the whole smoke house. <laughs> you know, as he's going out there. That's how we gotta be. The devil tries to talk us out and discourage us. Don't help them. Don't do this. Don't do a good deed. Don't bring any honor to your father. You got to say, well, I'm going to do it anyway. If you don't shut up, I'm going to do it all day long. That's the way to put his foot in his mouth. Right? We need to make him mad. You ought to, you ought to be happy in making uh, the, the devil mad. Right? You know the old saying that I said, no, one good, no good deed goes unpunished. But there's a saying that you need to remember in your mind. That no good deed goes unnoticed. Now I ain't saying that you'll be noticed in this life. Because you should never do good deeds expecting to be noticed by anybody else down here. 
but in your Father's eyes. No good deed that you are trying to do goes unnoticed. And the more that you handle yourself respectfully and honorably in the situations that arise, the more you bring blessings and smiles unto him. The more he is proud of you. You know, look at it this way. That God is going to bless the burden soldier and without a doubt, he's going to send reinforcements. I believe that with my whole heart. When Jesus was tempted after it ended, what did the Lord do? Did he not send an angel to strengthen him? Right? He endured what the devil was throwing at him. Forty days. We have trouble enduring 30 minutes. Amen. Jesus endured 40 days, not eating, fasting. Some people say, oh, it just meant he didn't eat certain things. The Bible says he didn't eat. He didn't say just certain things. Uh, Elijah went on 40 days after eating one time. What makes you think that Jesus couldn't do it? Well, he was given a special spiritual food. I, maybe Jesus was too. I don't know. But I know he went 40 days because the Bible says he did. And he was hungry. He did so much more than that for you. He gave us an example of how to fight the devil. Amen. Right? Through himself. He said, I will be your sword, spiritually speaking, because Jesus is the what? Come on, y'all. And the word is what? Quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, right? And when we read in Revelation, it talks about the sword coming out of his mouth, and it says it in other places in the Bible as well. Jesus is revealing unto us, he is our sword against the devil. He is what will help us fight. We just have to get to know him better. Right? Study more, learning more. So when the devil comes, attacks and tries to get you down. The worst thing is trying for him to make you remember who you once was. Try to make you doubt that you're really saved. Has anybody ever doubted your salvation? Has the devil ever tried to make you doubt your salvation? I say if he hadn't ever tried to make you doubt it, you ain't never been saved. He's already got you. Right? But I guess the main poor purpose of what the Lord has laid on my heart this evening is don't give up even though the devil rages. Don't replace Jesus because you're afraid of what the devil's going to do. Don't replace goodness because you're afraid of what he's going to do. We live in a society that's so weighed up with evil and anger and, and just garbage. You know, just, just garbage that the devil's dishing. You don't got to be part of that. You don't got to become like him. We're supposed to fashion ourselves after the Lord. And though the devil rages, we're supposed to keep on. Don't give up. That's why we're supposed to uh, uh, unite together. The Bible tells us to forsake not to assemble thyself together. And we're told to do it even more so as we see the day approaching. We're supposed to exhort one another, lift each other up. That's what you need this kind of thing for. So, uh, so a meetings for, spiritual contact for. The Bible tells us that we should prefer one another. Because we should be lifting each other up as brothers and sisters in Christ that we might be able to carry on and fight the devil in the middle of this dark and terrible night. Amen? Right. We're greater in numbers. That's right. Right? Than we are alone. I don't know your burdens. The message is short. But I hope it was to the point. Don't give up on it. No, the devil's going to try to make you think that everything good you're doing is going to make get you in trouble, going to get you punished, so there's no point in doing it. You know, there's even laws. There's, there's things that just for trying to do good on certain cases, you can be arrested before somebody that was doing wrong will. Does that mean that you shouldn't do what's right? No. 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 You know, if you stand outside some of these abortion clinics and try to give somebody a pamphlet, not even saying nothing, just try to give them a pamphlet about Christ. They can arrest you. Do you know that? Because it's going against what they're teaching. 
Well, what's the difference in that than somebody over there trying to murder some kid and you're going to go over there and help them and save that kid's life? And they, they might put you in jail for that too because it wasn't their kid, you reckon? Huh? You see some big man getting a hold of a kid by the neck and strangling and, and you're going to do something to try to help it, right? What if it ends you up in jail? You still going to do it? Same thing with abortion or killing the child. Some big doctor, whether it be a woman or a man, is reaching in there and breaking its little body to pieces. We need to be standing up and telling it it's wrong. What if it gets you in jail? Speak up anyway. Yeah. Right? What about the sins that are consuming our children? The devil's putting these things out there to get a hold of them from drunkenness and, and uh, from pornography and, and everything else that they try to get them hooked on. <laughs> If they make it illegal for you to say anything against it, are you going to shut up or are you going to keep saying something against it? You're going to keep, you better keep on saying something against it. Because this world better not be your God. Right. Right? Our Father says things are wrong. We need to stick with Him. I think He knows what's right. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you as humbly as we know how. So thankful for who you are, God, for what you've done, what you've done. Lord, and you know why you sent the message the way that you have. We pray, God. God, and we know that the, the devil wants to discourage us, but you are our encourager. You are our victory. You are our strength. And we were more than conquerors. About you, we come. God, we just ask that you would search us out. Lord, and wherever we've been stumbling, where we've been so discouraged, where we've been knocked down, I pray that you will help us. Find grace for the Spirit to say me God. And have the strength to carry on me. As we look up at you, our example, God, we just love Lord, we give you all the praise. Lord, as we give this altar call here in just a moment, I pray that your name will be honored, that you'd be sought after, and, and Lord, that, that you would just receive the glory. Lord, because in the midst of all these bad things that happen around us, if we'll just open our eyes, we'll see how much you have been there and how much good you have done to help us to be able to make it to where we are this evening. May you receive all the glory, Lord, because you're worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to give an invitation. No, no topic, just, just an invitation. Everybody who needs to pray, like I said, maybe you need to take a minute and just give God praise that things didn't go the way they could. The things didn't go the way that it could have went. Man, there's so many times this week. Amen. Amen. Let us, everybody would stand. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Eyes closed, head bowed. Oh, the cross of Calvary, our blessed Savior died. Gave his life to save the world. Come on. In his pain and agony for everyone, said I, shed the blood that stained the old road in cross. Was his blood, his precious blood, that stained the old road in cross. Was his love that made the old Let's save the old world of the cross. To the cross, the rugged cross, they nailed his precious hand. And then he would make the call. There's heart and there's love for everyone who stands for the blood. You say the old rugged cross. Twas his blood, his precious blood, that saved the old rugged cross. Twas his blood that made the old rugged cross. Oh, so, so far straight, coming from today in the blood. That stained the old road we crawled. One awful death he died. 
say without a shadow of a doubt that you know that everything is good between you and the Lord this evening. Amen. I'll sound a little better than normal. Huh? Well, hey, man. the crowd here tonight is above normal. There we go. There's a few of them. Yeah, there you go. Well, y'all, we love you. And I hope that it is. I hope that everything is good between you and the Lord. If it's not, we need to get it fixed. To our Facebook audience, we'll say good evening, and we love you. We'll see you on